Hi guys, welcome back. Fit as a butcher's dog now, look at me. Yeah, almost. <laughs> ne <laughs> nearly. <laughs> <laughs> nearly. Oh, I'm only going to do a little project today because I'm still a bit with the dust and everything getting to me. Um, I just want to answer, uh, Jim asked me about with this this little... Uh, lidded box. Lidded pot thing, uh, clamshell type box. That's what I think I should have called it, a clamshell clam box. Yeah, because yeah, it's more like a clamshell, isn't it? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Right, um, Where's the about the oil, how long I leave it to to dry. So I normally, 20 minutes, give it another coat, and then I leave it to the next day, and then I just give it a little buff with these this tissue like that, and it puts a nice little satin sort of shine on it. And that's it, that's enough, that's all I wanted. Lisa's just gonna have this on her dressing table, and it's just to put a few little knickknacks in, and that's it. So. Yeah, that's all I do. Other people do different things, but that's that's all I do with it, mate. So, yeah, 20 minutes, give it another coat. Give it as many coats as you want, really, until it stops soaking up the oil, I suppose. But I do that, then leave it to dry, and that's it. So, um, today, I'm gonna, I was asked, someone asked me when I'd done the cherry bowl, and they asked if, now, his name is... Steve Kirby. Steve Kirby. And he asked me, he's new to turning, if I'd do a baby roll. I've done this one just a bit earlier because I wasn't sure what I was going to put inside it or whatever. Um, not something I normally would make this sort of thing. I don't have kids and no intention of having any horrible <laughs> little brats. So, um, yeah, so I made a little rattle. And he's asked me if I could do one because there's plenty on YouTube, which he said himself, but he wants me to sit just with carbide. Okay, so he's asked me if I can do it with carbide. So I thought... That's what I do. So I make one. He's got a grandson, isn't it? Yeah, he's got, he wants to make one for his three-month-old grandson. And he's, he's managed to get hold of some of my tools. It's new to turn in. So he wants to see it done. So that's what I'm going to do. So here we go, guys. We're going to make a little baby rattle. <laughs> not What you should do is you get them by the legs <laughs> and you them to rattle. <laughs> no, I'm not going to make a baby rattle. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> get them by the legs. <laughs> right, so... I've got a piece of wood here. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the chisels from my spindle set. So I've got the, the I mean, you can just use your normal standard type three ones. I'm going to use these because they're nice and small. So I've got the, the square one, but I've got an R2 cutter on that. Okay. Uh, makes it into a lot, lot, using the skew. Oh, it's lovely, beautiful. And I did say, I'd say about that using the R. I've used the square on it as a skew. I never even bothered thinking about the R2. Very little on Underused cutters, really, by a lot of people. But I tell you what, it, absolutely fantastic, the R2 cutter. I find it, if you don't need that dead square corner on something, like a dead right angle, you know, 90 degree angle, then the R2 is, is, is better than the square, it really is. Um, right, I've got a 12mm round, I've got the detail, and I have got a 9mm round up there, but I don't think I'm going to need it. Okay, so I think that's basically what I use. And I'm going to have to do use another little tool to do the hollowing out, which I'll show you that in a bit. Right, okay, I'm getting out of breath now. Right, I've just got this. I've just rounded that and put a little tenon on the end so it can go into my shark jaws. You just do it for whatever chuck you've got to put it in, okay? Right, tighten that down because it's overhanging a little bit. I'm going to put my step centre up for now. And it doesn't matter that that's marking that because that's going to be the end I'm going to hollow. So I'm going to be going into there. So all I'm doing is I'm putting this on here for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to make... Oh, sorry if I just come past you. There, we're going to make the this bit first, okay? The, the bobble end bit first is what we're going to do. Right, so... I'll put the face shield on. And we'll start. Right, so that's near enough at the diameter, so I haven't got to take it down much on that. Uh, and as you can see, it's just that sort of size, so there we go. Right, let's start, start it up. Right, we're going to use the round one at first and just take some. Just rolling it over. Right, to there, so roughly what size have I got? That's going to be the bottom. 
around about there. So I'm just going to come in and put a little line there. Right, okay. Right, now I want to get rid of some of this wood out of here first. So, going in with the R2, what's going to skip? So I'll take some of this wood down so I can get in. There we go, now I can get in there like that, see? Now I can't go too far on this end yet because I've got to hollow it. Okay, so I just want to... That's just for me getting down there, basically. Roll your cutter over and you get a nice, uh, a nice clean finish. Get even there. Right, and then I'm going to talk slowly, slightly measure it so that there's going to be like a little pair of them. So, right, I'm just going for on the middle of this. So I'm going to put a line there. Actually, that's not the best tool for it. Let me get the R2. I'm going to do a little V cut there. Then we're going to go for another V cut here. And then we're going to throw this over. Grab these. That's all. Wouldn't that we'll get that tool rest up a little bit? That's better. A little bit higher. That's better. Right, remember when you roll it over, completely close it so it, it rolls right over. Otherwise, it'll try and slip back on you. Now I'm going to roll it this way. There. Roll it this way. There, like that. And then this is going to be tanking down. Like so. Coming a bit further with this. Only a little bit, because like I say, I've got to hollow it, so I can't go too far. Just going to roll that in a little bit more. There, and this. Just clean this top up. There we go. Right, okay. Bring this bottom round. Like so. Bring this one round so keep it in level. Now a lot of time you'd cut that way when you're doing this on to the end grain but it's okay I can come up and either way because I'm rolling it over so I'm getting a nice cut. Right now I've got to take this away because I want to get into the end and do the hollowing. Right now I'm going to move my towel. My towel stops right out the way so it's not going to bother me. Get ready to hollow this. Now the problem we've got for the hollowing, we're just going to get a, a little bit of a start here with a sea tail one. And I don't want a big hole. Right, now, if you want you can drill this, okay, and you can just use a drill and put a drill in. No problem. But for me, time it'll take me to set a drill up and all that, I can just follow it anyway. But the problem you've got when you're doing your carbide, if you want to keep your hole nice and small, I mean, I'll probably be a little bit bigger than that, but not much, is you can't because of the bar. The bar catches, the bar always gets in the way. And um, if you go for a smaller bar, it'd be so flimsy at all, and it wouldn't really be much good. For this sort of thing, what I use is... Uh, just one of these tools which is a piece of square tool steel, okay? 
That's all it is. Let's turn it off for a second. Um, that's all it is. It's a piece of tool steel. All right, quarter inch, six mil tool steel. Okay, and you can get this. I mean, I've got another piece. Of, I just bought. You can buy it on eBay, whatever. Um, this is a piece. It's an old tool. You, you see them these. You see them at the boot fairs and things like that. Just pieces of square tool steel in a tool. And they make, they're perfect for doing this hollowing. You can get in and get it all hollowed out. Makes it nice. Um, yeah, I, I normally pick them up at the boot fair. So I've got a, a little one like this for really small stuff I use. And it's it's not even worth doing in carbide. It's better just to use something like this. You know, I had thought before about doing one of the parting tools and making it really slim and using that. But... I don't need to because these these last three I only use them for little bits. I'm bringing that to the boot fair. Bargain. <laughs> look at this. Look, look, look at this. What I got. Robert Sorby. Little Robert Sorby. Six wheel bowl gouge. Okay. Actually, it's probably less than that if the, if you're measuring by the flute. But the actual stem of it is six mil. Little bowl gouge like that. Look at that. That's a lovely dinky little thing. All right. That was at the boot fair. Picked up out of the box. I said, here, mate. How much for that? Fifty p. <laughs> 50p oh yeah you don't know what you got yeah i'll have that <laughs> thank you very much and it, i don't think it's really ever been used it was just it had a little bit of rust and i was just been left in the box so cleaned it up sharpened it works well, absolutely lovely <laughs> absolutely lovely if you're doing like into doing your little projects right getting back to it we're going to start with this this is what i'm going to hollow it with at first and i'm going to show you how we're going to do the inside bit okay so what I'm going to do is get that. So I want this, I don't want it on centre, because if I go in dead on centre, or slightly below, if I go up, you get an almighty grab when you go in, because you use this as a scraper. Remember, you can't do any fancy cuts here. It's such a small thing. Um, look at that finish on that. Look, we've only done around that with a carbide. and touched it with sandpaper. And look at what a beautiful finish we've got. Right, anyway, shut up. Right, so I'm slightly above centre, so when I go in, I'll be angling down to get onto centre, okay? And that way you won't get any, you won't get any grabbing. It won't grab on you or anything. Right. And then we're gonna have to make a tool up to do the following bit. So, yeah, for me, this is how I, you can drill it if you wanna drill it, but all I do is use one of these and go in. Might be a tiny little bit high, and we'll go a fraction lower, but don't go below center. Don't ever have the tool toes going up. That's it. All right, now I'm just gonna keep pushing in until I get roughly the I'm already down to there, see? down to as deep as I want to go. Now you can use the little six mil hollower. I've got that and it's on the six mil on the ten mil bar, but see now that'd do a lovely job in there. But I can only get to here. On this ten mil bar is perfect. Now I want to keep the hole nice and small. So, right, for getting in there, what I use, I don't know why I'm shouting. <laughs> I'm gonna take this off so I'm not shouting. What I use are Allen keys. Okay, and I make, I make my own. So, I just sharpen up like that. I've got this one slightly longer. When you leave it longer, be careful because Obviously, when you're going in here, it will try to grab and spin you around if it's too far. I find this this sort of 
length not too bad you can get in here you can get right under and it, it doesn't tend to try and spin it so much just hold but, it up one more time right there okay i've got this one but you have to be very delicate with it. but they can if it's too long it want to try and pull you over all the time but what i do when i sharpen them i sharpen them on both sides so they they work like negative rake okay so what I'm going to do, I'm going to sharpen one up now just to show. So all it is is a standard Allen key, 6 mil. Now I have this so it fits in one of my ultimate hollowers. So if you've got one of the hollowers oh, that takes the heads, this is the 8 mil head in here. This takes the 6 mil and the 8 mil. So I have it so it fits in here. It comes like a multi-tool, see? Like I say, don't forget you can use all your router bits in here as well. So I'll take that head out for a minute. And then the Allen key just fits straight in. Okay. And because it's only for small bits, that's enough. I don't have to come onto this bar. I use the actual Allen key on the tool rest because I'm only doing little things. I'm not going to use this to hollow something. Don't try using it on bowls and vases and things. <laughs> it's not for that. Don't, don't get silly with it. Right. So I've got one made up already that I could use. But I'm just going to show you how easy it is to sharpen one up and use this one. Now, this was the same length as that. I've just cut it down a little bit because, as I said, I don't want it too far because I only want to just get in here and hollow this out. OK. So. Right. I'll just show you how I do it. You don't need no special sharpening stuff. Nothing fancy. I do it over here on my sanding one so i'm going to stand down this end all right the reason i stand this end is because i like to sharpen with the belt coming towards me not going away from me okay and i'm just going to use a pair of pliers just to hold it because it's going to get hot I've got a little pot with some water in over it. That's it. I've just stuck it in there. Done that. it. <laughs> I just popped it in there and that's it. It's done. That's cold. I can hold it. See? Okay. Um, and that's it. And this is tall steel. You know. Um, let me give you those pliers. These are made out of tall steel. So they're pretty good. And I think that should be sharp enough. So. Now I'm going to pop it in. Here, it's a beauty with these um, ultimate hollowers, so you can do all these different things with it. Make your own little tools because it, it's only for doing these little projects. If you do these, you know, you really want to go out and spend a load of money on a, a tool just to do this. So, and that all that's going to do is come in here and just hollow that like that. And it's because I've got it on the big handle, it's a bit overkill, but it means I can grip it well. Right, okay. Put the face shield on. And we get this hollowed. And being that's tall steel, you can sharpen them on your CBM wheels as well, because I have. They'll be fine. Right, okay. Right, I've got a bit more light on the situation here. Right, I'm just going to come in nice and gentle.
in a minute. It will make a bit of noise because remember, this is only a six mil shaft, so it's gonna vibrate a little bit and we are just scraping with it, okay? So it will make a little bit of noise, but it gets the job done. Because I sharpen it, put the slight chamfer on the top and your main one on the bottom, because you do that, it makes it like a negative rate, so it, it doesn't grab it all and turn it. So you feel right, look. You can come in with it, it won't, it won't twist it. It makes a bit of noise. if you haven't got one of these tools that you can put that in then you can just make yourself a little handle for that to go in you know and or you can buy the, I mean you can buy the long allen keys so buy yourself one of the longer allen keys and then sharpen it down the same and you can put that into a wooden handle then and you've got your own specialist little tool just for doing this and that's yeah I think that's followed enough in there and it doesn't matter about what the finish is like, because I'm, see, I'm right into there, so yeah, we're all over here now. It doesn't matter what the finish is like in there, because who's ever going to see inside that? They're not. You're going to put stuff in there to rattle. So, there we go. That's how you can do that, little job. And then I can put the 8mm cutter back in there. And if I wanted to follow a 20 foot bow, I could be doing that tomorrow. <laughs> <coughs> right, okay. So, now we've done that, we've got to sort out our front here. I don't need to open that hole much, any more than that really. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to tidy up the front a bit. Bring that to us down a little bit. Little cut like that. There we go, that's all nice there. That's all nice. Right, okay. And it's all this round. Just bring it straight round a little bit more. Now the tool tab got sent out of the way. Remember, ride the bare ball, keep it over, get a nice clean cut. There we go, right, okay, now I've got a... Start taking this down inside here. And I'm going to use my parting tool. come round here on the front. On the bottom, I mean, this is going to be the top, see? Oh no, we've got to get this here. Blend this shape. 
Remember, drop the handle. We want that little mark to go there. Got the handle and all's good. Right, let's get in here. Right, so I'll go any further on, there's a little bit of sanding on it. Not going to take a lot. Using my detail chisel, cutting in, keeping it. Right now, you can carry on and go through with, with this if you want. Um, but for me, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll all know I like to use my, my little skew for parting off anything like this, okay? So I'm going to just come in with my little skew just to take this off. There it is, it's all going loose. There. Okay, and that way I can get down to a tiny little nibble there. Okay, like that. Right. Feel that sort of dust out. Yep, we're nicely hollowed in there. Now all I'm going to do is do a little bit. I'm going to keep the paper in my palm. And that way I can keep a nice rounded top. I'm not putting no finish on up it on this. And purposely because if you're going to make one of these and you're going to... <laughs> Hang on a minute, I'm shouting away, you know. If you're going to make one of these and you're going to do it for kiddies, then you're going to have to find out what, what you're going to use for, for what's going to be safe, okay? If you're going to paint them, if you're going to stain her or whatever you're going to do, just make sure it's safe because it is for a baby, okay? So I'm not going to give any recommend that. I'm sorry, guys, but there's so many bloody snowflakes in the world. I'm really not going to give you any... I mean, when I was a kid, I spent most of my time going around picking up chewing gum off the streets, ah. putting it in my mouth, put anything in my mouth, you know. <laughs> Bloody hell, we were kids. You'd find us walking down the road with a bit of stick stuck out of our mouth, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Whatever. But nowadays, people are so, oh, poor little Johnny might get sick. <laughs> there you go. Right, okay. So that's my top. And that's the one I've done before, so eh, that's not bad, actually. Good. Pretty close. See, as I didn't exactly measure, I didn't actually measure at all. <laughs> right, so now I've got to make the handle for that. So that's what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to take this piece of wood out of here. Just keep that for something else. And then I've just got a, a small square of wood here that I'm going to use. Get this is all beach, isn't it? Beach yeah, this wood. is all beach. Now, I'm not going right in on this, but these are the shark jaws, so they hold it nice anyway. And I'm going to bring a 
a, a uh, doobery twiddly bit up to hold on to it anyway. <laughs> right, so that's it. because I've got that hanging out quite a little bit. So I'm going to bring this bit, this bit up, and I'm going to use just this little pointy one, I think. I'll do. Right, there we go. That's it, that's got that. That should all be hunky-dory. Right, I'm gonna bring that up a fraction because I'm gonna be using me, me square chisel there, me uh, R2 one, and a bit like a, as I say, a bit like a skew. And we're gonna make the little handle. Right, so I'm just going to round it off first, okay? And go back and forward with it. Sorry, Lou. Right, so just going to come in and get rid of some, uh, get rid of some of the bulk on it, all right? Beautiful, beautiful finish, right. Okay, so we're gonna make the handle pretty much the same size as that, so I can see where that is. Yeah, so around about there, so that's where my handle is roughly gonna finish. So now what I've got to do first, I wanna get the bit that's gonna go inside here, so I wanna get the little tenon bit done. A little bit high. For this piece at the moment. Okay. Right, okay, I'm going to have to move this out of the way now. Get rid of this bit on the end for now. Okay. Not far off. That's not far off at all. Oh, bugger, what did I put that in for? <laughs> right, that's, that's just going to grab there. So, tiny bit. Right, now, we're going to start getting this down here. Gonna, that screech a little bit. I want it to be a nice bit when it goes in. I want it to be tight, so it's yeah, that's all right. Right, I've got to taper this down just a little bit more. So now's where we're using, like I said, this just as a skew, and this R2 is fantastic for it. Bring it all rest up a little bit, makes it a bit easier. Right, that's about where I want to be with that. Right, 
Okay, I'm going to put the pin on. Oh, I'll try this one down from here. So right, I'm gonna just make sure this thing can take a little bit of room on its end, so I'll still come this away. Give yourself a bit of room in here, see, so I can uh, so I can get in. Well, how big do I need that to be? A little bit smaller than that. No, I'm not trying to match them up dead on exact, but roughly. I'm trying not to go down too much, but it's more than what I am going down, so let's have a look. Yeah, it's near enough there. So a lot of people would say, well, why didn't you just measure it? Because that's too easy. <laughs> that's too easy, anyone can do that. <laughs> got, to get, got to get good at just judging things. Uh, that's not going to be the one. I'm going to have to go in with this one. Huh? So I'm in a bit close, see, so I've got to come in here. Right there. Don't catch that with your cutter up, you'll be sorry. If you need room, take some of it away. If you come in here like this with that cutter up and that touches that, you'll get one almighty catch, believe me. Right, sand that a little bit. But that R2, that R2 cutter on there, that makes a fantastic little skew, that really does. You get a beautiful finish off of it. A 
And I know people would say, oh, well, you should learn to use a skew, but well, not everyone's got a skew. Not everyone wants to learn to use a skew. Not everyone wants to go and buy expensive sharpening gear. I mean, if you're into making these sort of, these sort of little projects, I'll tell you what, one of those cutters will probably make you a thousand of these before you even think of replacing that. If not more. Right. But I would always recommend getting yourself a tiny little skew like this just to have the parting off. So you can get a lovely part off with it. So there you go, we see we've done let me, uh, let me pop the head thing off. You can see we've done virtually hardly any sand, the tiniest little bit of sand with just one grit and look, that's the finish we've got guys. Got a beautiful finish on that. And that's our top, and that's gonna sit on there like that. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do. Oh, all the top stuff here because I'll tell you there is absolute no expense being <laughs> spared on these things. So what I've got in here, now again, use whatever you find is going to be safe. Some people put um, rice in to make the rattle, some people put dried corn in, uh, you can put all sorts of things. You know, for me, these are just some little stones out of the garden. Okay, they're just tiny little stones <coughs> and they just sort in there. Yep, and that's going to be fine. And then all I'm going to do here a little bit of super glue around it again when you're doing this stuff. Um, no, not that one because I haven't even started that one. That's a new one. Sorry, this one. Again, <coughs> this isn't being given to a child. Well, a big kid, it's being given to Lisa, but <laughs> um, if uh, you're giving it to kids, then you might not want to be using super glue or stuff. Personally, me, I would, because what they do is they put it in their mouths, they soften the glue, then the glue will go off, seal their mouth shut, no more bloody crying. <laughs> they won't need the rattle. That either. would suit me. Right, there we go. Bit of super glue, give it a little twist. That's gonna hold it up. Just give it a second. There you go. Got your maracas, yeah. There we go, guys. Got all oh, right. One slightly bigger than the other, but there you go. That's for a big kid. That's for a small kid. Whatever. <laughs> but there you go. Oh, look yeah. at that! I'm well aware. I've always it. wanted to play a musical instrument, and now look, I can. Yeah. See, I can do. Yeah. That's actually quite good, isn't it? I like that. To make a tambourine. I'll go for my another two and I can be like, <laughs> yeah. Go partying. <laughs> oh, you wait, guy. You wait for Christmas this time. Yeah, I'll be out there well away. <laughs> right, there we go. Anyway, um, Steve Kirby. Steve Kirby. Have that else? There you go. A rattle made with carbide. Two of them I've done actually, but yeah, that one's got slightly bigger out. If, like I say, you can measure, but why? <laughs> Nothing in the world is the same, is it? Everything's different. No. So why Being should these all be identical? Yeah. I'm not selling them. There you go. Anyway, little roll done with the carbide. So pr pretty much, I mean, you know, just it's the standard free set. That's all it is. These are just the ones on the spindle. I like them on the round bar. Um, that R2 cutter on that rail, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, I've only done that little bit on it, but I've done, uh, I've tried it out with doing some pummels and stuff like that with that. On I don't turn spare spindles, stair spindles and stuff like that. I'm not into that. Um, I don't turn off any of this stuff, really. Not not that there's a, a working thing, because it's not my, my thing. I've never, ever turned bowls for work. I don't. I only really started doing most of these bowls for the YouTube channel, just to show people what these tools can do. I don't do that. Or I don't tell you, you can't earn a living out of bowls, as far as I'm concerned. Not, not, not enough to support yourself and make a living. Very hard, you know. If you if you're someone famous, you might get a bit of money for them. But to me, these little pots and that. I mean, I make these little things, these little pots up. I mean, it's like these. I only do them to show 
it's not the pot i do them to show where you can get that finish you know a beautiful finish straight off your tools and no no torn grain or never ever should you suffer with torn grain if you if you learn to 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 do it and do a nice sheer cut and get a good cut finish you'll never ever suffer with torn grain on any wood no matter what it is the most rotten piece of wood you won't get a piece of torn grain on it if you learn to cut properly but what would you sell these for i mean what, a pound each two pounds something like that. i mean i wouldn't pay more than that to anyone for them because it's i mean it wouldn't even cover the cost of the piece of wood would it really yeah but you know unless it's different if your name's like you know van Gogh or Mozart or Beethoven, you're famous worldwide. But if you say to him a woodturner's name, go up to someone in the street and say some woodturner who might be quite well known to you, and they go, who? Because woodturning is not, isn't it? It's just not recognised in that way. I don't think so, anyway. Very hard to make your money if you're going to do bowls and that, especially in this country, because we we don't we don't use that sort of stuff, do we? No. Because, I mean, it's different. You guys in America, now you do Thanksgiving and you, know, you make a big thing of things, didn't you? Invite people around and big have parties. Big, big parties. No, we don't do that over here. People yeah. have a party, yeah, they order a takeaway. Normally <laughs> from McDonald's or something. <laughs> cool. And then they all end up in arguing at the end of the day, don't they? If the yes, families it. get together. UK families, they get together, they argue. That's all they bloody do. <laughs> Anyway, might just be my family, I don't know, but there you go. <laughs> that's my experiences from what I've seen. Uh, anyway, guys, that's that's it for today. It's just a little rattle because, like I say, I'm conserving my my lungs as much as I can. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, if you want to do a little baby's rattle and you want to do it out of a... That's just a couple of off-cuts of beach, you yeah? know? That was... That one might have hollowed a little bit more than that one, but there, different sounds. So that's what makes a, a, a band, isn't it? Yeah. You know, different sounds. Right, so yeah, there you go, guys. That's that's about it. I don't think I've got anything else to say, really. No. That's about it. So I will see you on the next one. Toodle pip. Bye, guys. <laughs>